Okay, this is just a, a little bit more follow-up on a different way of using imagery from Mars, trying to study morphology of features on the ground. It's a little bit more of a takedown of this supposed gorilla. If you've seen my other video, and I'll add it as a reply to this one, you've seen the story about this alleged gorilla seen on uh, pictures taken by the Spirit Rover. And I explained that using maths, we could measure that gorilla, we could find out using tools, other pictures taken of that same feature from different locations and we identified by measuring this rock on one on the left and the one on the right using basic trigonometry because we have stereo cameras that co-registered these two rocks to be the same feature and in doing so debunked the story that this is in fact a gorilla. You can see these features match up very very accurately. So we have this picture from up close and we have this picture from behind that's also the same feature. Now, I mentioned we have stereo pictures and how we can use those, like this one here, a view from the left, so a view from the right and then a view from the left, to interpolate depth. Now, you can do that with every single picture, every single pixel in every single picture. And in doing so, you can actually generate a 3D model of that little view. You can generate a 3D model of this view or of the two views from opposite sides of that same rock that I showed you just a second ago. So, here's a picture in the bottom right-hand corner, and this is the terrain wedge on the top left-hand side, converted from an engineering format into an animatable 3D format. And you can see, if you look closely, you've got the one big gorilla rock with a big shadow behind it. A black area behind it in the terrain wedge is essentially a shadow of visibility. There's no stereo data there because it's hidden behind the rock. And you can see in the photograph bottom right, there are three rocks in a kind of a triangular shape, and in the terrain wedge, you can see those in front of the large rock, three rocks in a little triangle. And these terrain wedges, these, these meshes, are used by the rover driving team to actually plan future driving. And here's the image on the other side. Here you can see the one I used to take down the gorilla in the first place. You can see the... Um, the gorilla rock in the foreground, you can see two rocks off to its right, the shadows the three of them are making, and indeed you can see the rover tracks towards the right hand side of that, uh, that terrain wedge, and you can see those also in the picture. Now what we can do is combine these two terrain wedges in an animation package and try and fill in both sides of the gorilla. So here we've got the two terrain wedges, here's the meshes, one is in green and one is in red, and see how they overlap. Because we're looking at opposite sides of roughly the same rock, then we're filling in the gaps hidden in different areas. Here's that coloured in, and you can see with the textures of the imagery put back on the mesh, we're actually now seeing the rock almost in its entirety. Here's the view of the terrain wedge re-rendered, and you can see, roughly speaking, there's the rock. Here it is from the other side. Here it is from behind and we can pan all the way around, see it from slightly above, and then come down to the perspective of where that famous picture was taken from. There's our gorilla in silhouette. Just like that. There's the gorilla shape from that very ordinary looking rock. If we take the picture, we can fade very slowly to a rendering of the terrain wedge. There's the gorilla. It's very, very obviously that exact rock. The same rock we documented so very well in that other video. Thanks to NASA JPL Cornell for releasing all their pictures. Thanks to a guy called uh, Max Street. I don't know his real name. It's just on a forum he posted a tool to convert these engineering data into animatable data. But there you have it. Two pictures. The terrain wedges from those stereo pictures producing a 3D model to explain the geometry of this thing and why it looks like what it does. Not an exact match. I've not spent too long trying to line them up exactly, but I'm fairly sure you'd agree this is pretty much a good match for those rocks.